colleague in plant pathology section, uh, and uh, Dr. Shitole uh, as a rapport chair for this very important session. We are very fortunate today, very uh, stalwart speakers are with us, and uh, it is a very good opportunity to all the delegates, participants, scientists to listen to them. Dr. S.D. Savang, who is chairing this uh, very important session, Integrated Management of Sugarcane Trust, is MS Agriculture in Plant Pathology in 1980, MPK Ravuri, he done PhD in 1986, GP Pant University of Agriculture, Technology and Pantagar, Uttarakhand, in U Diden, Uttar Pradesh. He is Vice Chancellor of uh, Dr. Balasaheb Savant, uh, Konkan College with uh, uh, Dapoli. His area of specialization is plant disease management, biological control of disease, fungicides and residues, etc. He have a lot of achievements. He successfully demonstrated bio-intensive DC management schedule for production of pesticide residue free grapes. And he has developed weather information-based location, specific web-based advisory for management of grapes and popularized in Maharashtra. And uh, he will, uh, he is also one of the speaker, but I will call him for, uh, at the la at last for giving his speech. Uh, with the permission of the chair, I will uh, uh, call upon first first speaker, Dr. Mrs. Uh, Chandis R. Ballad, ma'am for uh, his uh, presentation on biological control of sugarcane fish strategies and challenges. Uh, before that, I introduce ma'am. Uh, Madam is a director of National Bureau of Agriculture Insight Resources, Bangalore. She is a uh, MSc, MPhil, uh, PhD in Agriculture and Entomology. Is, uh, her uh, area of specialization is biological control of crop pests. Uh, he have achieved a lot. He de she developed protocols for continuous production of Helicoverpa armigera, overcoming problems of inbreeding depression and cannibalism, standardized procedures for continuous reading of uh, HNMOIDs, parasitoids, and she has developed technology for continuous production of uh, anthocorid predators. Uh, her topics for speech today is biological control of sugarcane pest strategies and challenges. I request ma'am to present uh, her speech. Respected Chair, uh, Dr. Savant, uh, the speakers for this session, Dr. Sushil, Dr. Vishwanathan, and uh, the organizers. First and foremost, let me place on record my gratitude to the organizers for giving me this uh, opportunity. Um, with this, let me pass on to my presentation. This is on biological control of sugarcane pests, uh, strategies and challenges. Um, as you all know, due to intensive agriculture, uh, from 1950 to 2000, if you are considering, there has been a six-fold increase of pests and a five-fold increase in loss. 
And uh, why we are concentrating on biological control is because we have to mo make sure that our food is free of any pesticides, that we are not eating anything poisonous. So because of this, we are concentrating on biological control. And uh, when we speak about sustainable pest management, um, we have to concentrate and see that the system allows the capacity to remain productive and maintain the resource base. And uh, we have to see that the system we are following is ecologically sound, economically viable, and socially just and acceptable. That is, the farmers should be accepting the method of production or protection, which should be acceptable for the farmers in general. Um, when we talk about biological control, there are two major um, areas that we are talking about. That is, either the natural biological control or the augmentative biological control. When we speak about the natural biological control, we, we focus on um, conserving what is there in nature. That is by not using pesticides or through habitat manipulation. The other category is the augmentative biocontrol, which can happen either due to uh, importation of exotic biocontrol agents, or we multiply the indigenous biocontrol agents augment them in the field conditions, and thus manage the pests. Um, in sugarcane, if you are talking about, uh, primarily there are different categories of pests, and uh, they can be the borers, the early shoot borer, the internode borer, the gurdaspur borer, the stock borer, plasi borer. Besides that, we have sucking pests like the pyrilla, the woolly aphid, the white flies, or even the scale insect and the mealybugs. So the other uh, subterranean pests include the termites and the white grubs. Um, now, regarding the biocontrol of sugarcane pests, I think all of you must be aware that in the uh, field of sugarcane ecosystem, biocontrol is a strategy which can be easily taken up, primarily because it's a semi-perennial crop with a long crop duration. And there is staggered planting, which enhances the economic schedule. And multitude of pests are there. There is a sequence of pests and also a following uh, natural enemy continuum is there. And because of this kind of a system which uh, supports the natural enemy population, and the cra crop canopy of uh, sugarcane ecosystem is such that it is not suitable for chemical insecticides, whereas it is highly suitable for biological control. And uh, finally, I should add that uh, sugarcane is a crop where biocontrol is very, very feasible because of government support and also the industry support. Now, if you talk about the history of biological control, there are several things which happen, but only a few of important events which happened during certain phases I am concentrating. If you talk about 1919, that, that was the period when only people were identifying which are the natural enemies which are occurring on different pests in nature. It was in 1930 that the mass multiplication of various bicontrol agents initiated like trichogramma. Between 1951 to 60, the natural enemies of mealybugs and whiteflies started to be identified. And uh, 58 to 64, Isotima jevensis, that is the parasitoid which was used against top borer, that was identified. Then uh, between 61 to 70, the natural enemies of the different sugarcane borers were identified. And 71 to 80, the inundative release of trichogramma initiated, 81 to 90, the pyrilla control, the pyrilla perpusilla control using the famous parasitoid, epipyrosis myrinoleuca, in several states, including Maharashtra. 1991 to 2000, trichogramma kilonis and cotacea flavipus were used together and found to be useful. Now, I have just broadly categorized the bicontrol items to pre-2000 and post-2000. Now, if you talk about pre-2000, uh, there were several attempts to control the pyrilla, uh, the very notorious pest, using various methods. One me method was to use field cages. They were using field cages and keeping the parasitized eggs within the field cages so that only the parasitoids come out and control the pest. And they observed a large amount of parasitism of pyrilla by the wonderful parasitoid, which is called Epirikinia melanoleuca, up to 95%. Later, what was done was this parasitoid was conserved 
augmented and released. And uh, metarhizium, which is a fungal pathogen, was also found to be very effective. Only thing was that the exotic predators were imported by our country, which was not very effective for pyrilla. Now, if you talk about the bicontrol of borers, which are the most important pests of sugarcane, the granulosis virus, this was used for quite some extent. This work was done at Sugarcane Breeding Institute. They even formulated a wettable powder for using uh, granulosis virus. And for internode borer, they found Bueria bassiana, which is a fungal pathogen to be very useful. And the top borer was managed through the use of Isotima javensis, which is a parasitoid. And trichocards are widely used for managing the borers. Now, I just want to ask you whether some of the aspects are, they are challenges or are they failures? For example, a lot of work has been done on using taconid parasitoids for controlling sugarcane borers. Several taconid parasitoids were imported, like uh, Paratheresia claripalpis, Lixophaga diatrea. These were all imported. Plus, scientists worked on the indigenous taconid parasitoid, which is called Stermiopsis reinference. But I should tell you, even I have worked on multiplying Stermiopsis inference. It's a very difficult parasitoid to multiply. You have to get the female mated, and the gestation period, you have to dissect the female. You have to physically transfer the maggots to the host larva, which is an extremely tedious process. Now, is it because of that it failed, or is it because Gradually, the organizations which were multiplying stermiopsis inference, they have stopped multiplying. I do not know the reason. Probably the sugarcane researchers and the factories will be able to tell why this has happened. Another challenge and failure, if you categorize, several potential bioagents pre-2000, that is in the 1990s, which were used, Isotima javensis. This was used for controlling the top borer. Cotacea flavipus was also used for controlling borers. Stermiopsis inference, there are very excellent stories, success stories of its uh, use for management. Epipyrops melanoleuca was used. Granulosis virus proved to be highly potential. But let me tell you, none of these are being produced in any of the laboratories that I know of. If there is any who are producing, I would request you to kindly tell me so that we would like to document who are really producing these bicontrol agents. Now, post-2000, I would be concentrating more on the work done by my organization, that is the National Bureau of Agriculture Insect Resources in Bangalore, and the work we have done for sugarcane pest management. One of the major parasitoids which we use for trichogramma, the, this is used for managing the sugarcane borers. This is called trichogramma kilonis, and the cards which you can see there, there is a card which I have depicted that, that is a trichocard, which is used for pest management. Now, to produce trichocards, you have to produce rice moth, that is Corsera cephalonica, in a large number. So this is done in a semi-mechanized way in our institute. The steps are given here. The literature is available on our website. Now, once we prepared the trichocards, they are cut into bits, as you can see in the plate down there. These bits are fixed on the sugarcane plant. So this is a technology which is the trichocard technology, which is used for controlling the sugarcane borers in the egg stage. Now, recently we improved this. Instead of making only two to three cards at a time, we are using big cages in which only four mother cards are placed in the floor of the cage and nearly 100 cards are hung at the top, and at a time, you can produce even 100 to 150 trichocards using this method. And uh, another method which we have come out with for producing trichocards at the farm level is called the production of trichocards using airy silkworm eggs. This method can be adopted by the farmers themselves. It need not be done in any laboratory. Now, this cycle which I have shown here, this is how airy silkworm can be produced using castor leaves as the host media. Using these castor leaves, we can produce airy silkworm. And using the airy silkworm eggs, we are producing trichocards. The advantage here is, if you use rice moth eggs, in one egg, you can produce only about two trichogramma. Whereas if you use airy silkworm eggs, in one egg, you can produce even 20 trichogramma adults. Now, this we could prove in the field level by adopting a family. 
This is a, uh, a family of a physically handicapped girl. Her name is Sushmita. You can see her picture here. We taught this girl how to produce trichocards using airy silkworm eggs. And she produced silkworm eggs. And using silkworm eggs, she could produce trichocards. And she gave these cards to her father, who is a sugarcane farmer. So this is an example which indicates even a physically handicapped girl could produce trichocards. Why not commercial insect trees? Why not departmental bicontrol labs? Now, uh, our institute, we have come out with uh, superior strains of trichogramma. We have uh, temperature tolerant strains of trichogramma, which have proved to be very effective in the high temperature zones like uh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. We have pesticide tolerant strains also. And we have covered nearly 70,000 hectares of different crop ecosystems, which includes sugarcane. And the benefit we have calculated through economic terms, which is around 5,000, 50,000 per acre. Now, trichogramma, many people, many companies, many industries are not taking up the production because they feel trichocards cannot be stored. But we have come out with a technology using which trichocards can be stored even up to 95 days, that is three months. So if this technology we have put up for commercialization in our institute, using this technology, the commercial insect trees can keep their cards, store them, and give it to the farmers at the time of need. Now, we also have a technology of using pheromone traps, not only for monitoring, but also for mass trapping. Now, this technology is possible for the sugarcane internode borer and sugarcane early stem borer. Now, our institute has got a nanotechnology that is using a platform which improves the efficiency of the pheromone. It can remain active for a longer period, and lesser quantity of the pheromone is sufficient, thereby reducing the cost of the pheromone. Now, in the sugarcane ecosystem, I just want to tell you, it is a very ideal crop which can attract natural enemies. This is just an example where one of our scientists, we kept some trichocards made out of airy silkworm eggs in the sugarcane ecosystem. And when we collected back, what we got 